So I've been waiting to do this video for a couple of years nearly since I bought my 40 watt classic reverb signature. Now I bought a 40 watt, well I didn't buy a 40 watt, I bought a 50 watt which is actually one where you can change it from cathode bias to fixed cathode. <laughs> Not sure what to call that. Um, and when it turned up it was the 40 to 20 watt by accident uh, from the retailer here, Peach Guitars. They offered to just come and swap it. I said give me the 40 watt for a week and I kept it. I didn't really know any different to be honest. So. I've been happy with it uh, in isolation. Anyway, recently I have got this chance to try this 100 watt. So I've had it for, for 10 days or so and I've been playing with it a fair bit. Now, the way this video is gonna work, I've got a few questions I wanna answer, okay? So I'm sure these are the questions you're thinking about. Is the 100 watt so much louder that it makes it impracticable at home? Um, what's the difference in the feeling and the sound between them? Um, when you play them at low volumes, how does it affect them? Uh, and what happens when you switch them to their low power modes? How does it affect the sound? So, I've done a bunch of demos. I'm gonna sprinkle in a bit of them here and there, and anything, anything I don't sprinkle in, I'll leave at the end of the video with some chapters so that you can, can go and, and figure that out. Now, I'm going to um, start with what happens when you turn them to basically as low as you can go and so for this one I've used a, a little decibel meter on my phone. Decibel meter is about a meter away from the amp and uh, so you hear each of the amps at low volume and also each of the amps at low volume with a gain pedal set low and my feeling behind that is especially at low volumes you're going to get a bit of stiffness from these amps so it's always a good idea to choose your favorite overdrive pedal and set it with a little bit of something. Now in this case, I've exaggerated it by using quite a lot of gain. We wanna see which amp copes better at low volume with a pedal. Um, so yeah, let's just hear that and uh, we'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> in both cases there with and without pedals the 100 watt was on average a few decibels louder now I chose to do this test because I think a lot of people who use these at home probably won't be able to go above about 90 watts so I wanted to see what the difference was and and what did I think well basically the 100 watt is more impressive at lower volumes than the 40 watt is 
Um, the 40 watt can get a bit quieter, but it's not giving you a lot at that point, and you throw a pedal into the mix and it gets a little bit mushy, the 100 watt keeps itself together better. So on that test, it's definitely one up to the 100 watt. Okay, next, let's put them like for like on, on their dial, and we'll have everything at 12 o'clock. I'm not using the FET, which I'm not gonna use that in this video anyway, I don't really use it myself, and I think a lot of people don't. Um, we just wanna hear what is the difference in character between the two apps at a very neutral-ish setting. Now, although I don't show you the decibel meter again in this video, um, I have a rough idea of, of what was going on here. Uh, and here we're looking at sort of 103-ish decibels, except that the 100 watt one would creep up to higher. Um, maybe it would peak at 100, 506 if I, if I hit it quite hard. The smaller amp was peaking at about 103, and overall their average was not that different from each other. It depends on how you play. But this is where you really just get the feeling that the 100 watt isn't just gonna blow your head off like you think it might. And when people ask me, should I get the 100 or 40, I feel like that's their main consideration is, am I just going overkill for at home play? Well, like a lot of modern amps, the master volume and the way it interacts with the, the gain and everything is really impressive. So you can fill out the tone without going crazy on volume. Um, and again, I've got clip, more clips of them being played at various volumes and gains, which I'm gonna leave at the end. But in every case, pretty much the 100 watt is, is better. Um, I prefer it myself. So six V6s, that sort of sound, the 40 watt, has more of a grind and a creaminess to it when you push it. And the six L6 holds together more. It's more pretty, more beautiful, more full and blooming. Um, and I mean, I could just stop the video here. <laughs> There's actually not a lot more for me to say about this. I wanna keep this as simple as possible for people who are looking to buy this. If I had my time over again with these amps, I would buy the 100 watt. I have no doubt about it. So, you know, just either way, you're not gonna get the best out of the amps at low volume. You really aren't. But in terms of what you can manage at home, at the low end, the 100 watt is just nicer to play. And then if you use an attenuator, which I highly recommend, and I know a lot of people in the comments recommend the Fryet power station, I don't have one, um, then you can push the amp a bit more and get more out of it and still keep the volume. Now you're obviously not gonna get the loud amp thing. And when everyone's telling me to try attenuators because it will make me happier with my amps, um, the reason I'm not jumping at the chance to go and buy one of these things, these Fryet power stations, is because for me, I have that addiction to the feeling of loud volume, not the feeling of the cooked, the cooking preamp section. So for me, the resonance of the speaker cabinet, the push of the speakers, the speaker breakup, um, the feeling of the air being pushed and the vibration through me is what excites me. And I can play really loud at home whenever I want. Um, and so I use attenuated earbuds, which can protect about 25 decibels worth. So if I'm pay playing at 105, 110, and I'm sitting, let's say I sit three, four foot from the amp, and I try these days not to sit directly in front of the amp, it's at an angle, and then with the earbuds, I still feel the whole room pulsing and reverberating, and, and that's what I love. And if you get a chance to do that with your amps, 
when you know everyone else is out of the house and you just go for it for 20 minutes, maybe warn your neighbours if you've got close neighbours. For me, that's the feeling. The, the cooked preamp section thing is not necessarily what I'm after personally. So, yeah. But the 100 watt will do better in all of those situations. Um, there's, there's one reason, I think, why they make the 40 watt version, and that's actually for the smaller gigging musicians. Uh, when I say smaller, I mean in smaller venues, small to medium sized venues, because in the mix, um, you know, these, these subtle differences between the apps aren't going to come out so much, but you will get more out of the 40 watt more quickly. The amount of headroom on that 100 watt is insane. So uh, in a smaller gig, if you don't want insane headroom and you want it to roughen up at the edges, the 40 watt is probably better for you. Now we're just going to do a quick test here. This is going to be the 50 watt on the bigger amp compared to its 100 watt. Then it's going to be the 50 watt compared to the 40 watt of the other amp. And then the 50 watt compared to the 20 watt of the other amp. But let's just see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the settings of the amps uh, up on the screen here before I start playing because otherwise it's going to get in the way of the decibel meter which I decided to use. Again, so here you're just going to hear the 100 watt, the 50 watt, the 40 watt, the 20 watt. And then we'll talk about it afterwards.
So you might have noticed the volume levels are reasonably different, but not, you know, hugely so. But then as we get to that point of 100 plus decibels, it is, it's really loud. I mean, generally you're not going to play like that at home, but the 40, 20 watt, you know, was in the lower 100. The 100 watt was more like 104 to 107 a lot of the time, and the 50 watt was just below that. But here's the surprising thing for me. I hadn't turned this watt, uh, amp into 50 watt before. And bear in mind, it was 50 watt that I always wanted in the first place. This is my favorite setting. The 100 watt is so full and big and clear and crystal. But the 50 watt just, it's like all the things the 100 watt has, but it's a bit, bit more fun, right? You're getting slightly less fullness and you're getting a bit more hairy edge and just, ah. Oh. Now, if you've been on my channel much recently, you'll know that I've been thinking about selling my classic reverb. I think spending more time with this 100 watt one, I know what I really want to do is sell the 40 and buy 100 uh, or the 50. Um, yeah, that 50 watt for me, that's what I'd stick in that. And I think I watched a video with Matt Schofield talking about his classic reverb or his amp and saying that he likes the 50 watt. I can see why. It's enough power and grunt. It's enough clearness and headroom and then it's just got something special about it, you know, in real life playing conditions and volumes. Ah, oh, real joy, I've got to say, real joy. So if you're confused about what to buy um, and there's a 50 watt fixed and cathode bias available. Um, so I, I mentioned that at the beginning, the 50 watt version of this amp, when it's 50 watt alone, you can either have fixed bias or cathode bias and it doesn't, that's what the power button on the back does, the switch. In the 100 watt, it goes 150, and in the 40, it goes 40 and 20. Now, the 40 watt and 20 watt sounded fine. They were good. For this sort of playing, they were absolutely fine. Less inspirational. I mean, we're still talking on a level, you know, really, really brilliant, but the, the 50 watt was super special to me to play, and that's where I would stay. So, yeah, that's actually made me really uh, consider keeping or selling my 40 and buying a 50 or 100 watt one. Yeah. So maybe that answers your question. So I don't want to string this video out unnecessarily. It's really answering a pretty simple question, which should you buy the 100 watt or the 40 watt, or even maybe the 50 watt in between, which I can't necessarily answer exactly about that one. But based on this, if I bought again, I would very strongly consider buying the 100 watt or the fixed 50 watt version, because the 100 watt version I would tend to use in 50. Now, I'd probably just go for the 150 watt one, um, because fixed bias versus cathode bias, I assume I'd end up just liking one of those ways round. And so I'll just go with 150, giving maximum flexibility. But actually, this doing this video has made me fall back in love with this amp more. Uh, you know, it fits a certain thing that, that it just does so well. Um, so yeah, what you've got left is a bunch of demos using a Strat and then a bunch of demos using uh, an SG, so humbuckers. So you can see how it is and, and sort of just pick and choose what you want to listen to. But anyway, I hope this has been useful. Let me know if you've got any more questions. Um, I won't have the 100 watt again with me, um, but I'll be able to answer any questions in the comments that you might have. So let me know. Cheers.
Thank mm-hmm. you.